Oh, nope, that's too much light. I don't got the power. Hey everyone, I'm Alexis, and I've been on YouTube for almost a year and a half, and I can't believe this is my first chatty video with you guys. This is really exciting. Today, I'm here to talk about props, because they're one of my favorite things in the world, and I figure for a first chatty video about yoga, this is a pretty good place to start. <laughs> Everybody needs to know how to use props. And props kind of have a bad reputation, which is frankly a bummer because they're amazing. They can help you do so many things in your yoga practice. So before I go into specifics on which props I use, which ones I like, alternatives you can use for different props, I just wanted to take a minute and talk about why props are actually really good for your practice. I think props kind of get this mis this misconception that you only use props if you're a beginner or if you're not kind of a an established yogi, let's just say, um, almost as if using props is is lesser than or not good enough. And that, of course, is not the case. The thing I always like to tell people about yoga is that most of the moves in yoga were actually based off of gymnastics, like Olympian level gymnastics. And so because most of these moves come from gymnastics, what happens is there are a lot of moves and poses that are incorporated into yoga that not everybody is made for, right? Yoga originated several thousand years ago and was originally designed to help us come to a calm space. It was based on meditation, right? So the very few poses that we have that originated from yoga 6,000 years ago when it was originally sort of created, their purpose was so that we could sit in meditation without wiggling and twitching. That was the purpose. Now, of course, we have all of these amazing kind of crazy postures like handstands and headstands and splits and arm balances, crazy inversions. And there's nothing wrong with those inherently. Those can be really fun and really challenging and they're a great way to build your strength and your flexibility and kind of test your strength and flexibility. But when that's all you see, when that's all that your understanding of yoga is, it's just yogis or people who can stand on their heads for 10 minutes, it can create this understanding that maybe yoga is not for you, which is not the case. <laughs> yoga is for everybody. And props really help that because they're just some things that some bodies can't do anatomically. There comes a point where your bones, your bone structure simply will just not allow you to go any further in a pose. So when it comes to props, there's really no minimum number of props because most props can be recreated at home. I'm going to show you some examples of that as we go. But if you are buying your, your first yoga props and you're like, Alexis, what do I need? What's going to be the most beneficial for me? What's going to be the most helpful? It's a tie <laughs> between two different props. The first of which is you've seen these in a lot of videos I do, and that's yoga blocks. Don't just buy one yoga block. If you're gonna buy one, you might as well get two because they have infinite uses. I did a yoga class entirely on how to use blocks, how to incorporate them into your practice. I will link that in the description, description box below. But blocks are not a sign that you cannot do a pose or you are not strong enough or you are not flexible enough. All blocks do is get the floor a little closer to you, which in, a in the case of a lot of props, is the purpose. If you've ever done a yin yoga class and say you're in lizard pose and you can't quite get your elbows down onto the mat, but it's hard to be on your wrist for a while, all the blocks will do is lift your floor up so it's a little higher so you can rest on your forearm rather than on your wrist. Similarly, blocks can help you build strength. For instance, you can put a block between your thighs in chair pose or in bridge pose and it's going to activate entirely different muscles than if you're just moving through those poses without any restriction or resistance at all. And that's that has nothing to do with your inherent strength or your inherent flexibility. You're going to gain more strength if you use a block between your legs, no matter how strong you are. That's just the beauty of the human body. So in my videos, you've seen me use foam blocks, and I do love foam blocks best. They are light, they are sturdy, and they're also fairly inexpensive. I will link the ones that I have and use down below. However, you can get yoga blocks made from different materials. So, like I said, these ones are foam. I also have a yoga block set that is made out of acacia wood. 
these are, they're definitely heavier. So if I'm doing something where I want a little bit of weight, so for instance, putting a block between my thighs for chair pose or bridge, this is a great way to add a really subtle amount of weight. These probably only weigh maybe a pound and a half, maybe two pounds. Sometimes I feel like these ones aren't quite as stable as the foam ones simply because it's wood. It's a natural substance. It's not going to be as uniform in weight distribution as the foam that is made by a machine. But I do love these ones. I will link a class below that was an earth element class. If you find yourself in touch with wood or cork blocks and kind of you're, you're doing yoga inside but you want to touch the earth element, kind of help ground you while you're practicing, these are great for that. Which that brings up my third favorite material is cork. Cork blocks are awesome. They are very sustainable, very earth friendly if that's something that you're concerned about. And they work very similarly to the foam blocks. They're lightweight, they have an even weight distribution, and all blocks, no matter the material, come either in, this is a four inch wide or a three inch wide. And really it just depends on your personal preference. I prefer four inch wide because they feel a little bit more stable and secure. And when I am trying to bring the floor up to me, I want to be stable. Now, I said that blocks were tied for first with another yoga prop. If you've done yoga for a while, you can probably guess what this is. That is a yoga strap. Now, again, like blocks help us get the floor closer to our bodies, the strap can help us get our limbs closer to where we want them. So the most easy example of this is just doing the leg stretch. Stick your leg out in front of you, you wrap your strap around your heel and you can pull your leg closer to you. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Another thing you can do with straps is you can stretch out your arms. So if you're doing just a basic tricep stretch with your arm behind your back, you can grab your strap, pull your arm, especially if you can't reach your fingers behind your back, this is a great way to get a nice stretch in your arms without hurting your joints, which is important. Straps do help us protect our joints, especially our knees. If you were doing any stretches with your legs, a lot of times when we're putting too much strain on our muscles, that strain manifests in our knees, which the knees are a pretty important joint and we don't wanna, we don't wanna hurt them too much. Like I said, in the same way that blocks bring the floor to you, your strap can bring your muscles a little bit closer to you than maybe your muscles could bring it to you themselves. Plus also straps are just kind of fun. In restorative poses, they provide a little bit of extra support. If you're doing a legs up the wall, you can strap, put the strap around your thighs to help release in your low back. Great stuff. Another yoga prop that you'll probably see often is a yoga bolster. Now, a yoga bolster is a great prop. It's very beneficial, especially if you do a lot of yin or restorative poses, but I would say a, a, a yoga bolster is not required because you can just go to your bed and grab a pillow. That's what I use. Again, they bring the floor to you or they just provide additional support. If you're feeling sick, but you wanna do a little bit of yoga to kind of move and, and not feel so stir crazy, that happens to me all the time when I'm sick, bolsters and pillows are the way to make it a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more restorative than if you're trying to do an actual yoga practice with no assistance at all. And finally, a fourth yoga prop that I really love that I don't see very often, is sandbags. These things, these things weigh about seven pounds each and they come just like a flat material and then you fill them yourself. So I filled mine with sand from the craft store. You can also just go to the beach and get sand. You can also fill them with rice or dried beans, whatever you have, whatever you want. And the sandbags are great when you want to stretch or open up your body in ways that maybe your muscles can't do. So say you're in a reclined butterfly, you could put the sandbags on your thighs to help open up your hips a little bit more. Because sometimes gravity doesn't always push on us quite as much as we want. The sandbags provide that. And I have a class all on how to use sandbags, all how I use them in my practice below, and I will link that below. Now, I did say I would talk about, uh, if you don't have any of these, what to do instead. So with yoga blocks, Yoga blocks, depending on what you want to use the yoga block for, have a variety of substitutes. So if you want to put the block between your thighs for a bridge pose or a chair pose, you can just use a pillow. Just kind of roll it up or a blanket, squish it together, hold it between your thighs. 
If you want a block as support to bring the floor to you, again, you can use a pillow or you can use textbooks or a small, kind of a small this-ish size shipping box. We all get Amazon packages in those smaller boxes. Just, if you wanna add some weight to it, you can kind of fill it with rice or something and then use that as a block if you don't wanna go out and buy these. Again, the nice thing about yoga blocks is that they are fairly affordable, but they have a lot of substitutes if you don't want to buy them. The strap in particular has a ton of items in your home that you can use if you don't have a yoga strap. There's no reason to go out and buy a yoga strap if you don't want to or you don't want to spend the money because you can use scarves, you can use towels, you can use t-shirts, you can use a dog leash, you can use a belt, you can use a tie, you can use rope, you can use a jump rope, you can use any plethora of anything in your house that can go like this, look kind of like this, and you can wrap it around your foot or your arm and hold onto it and pull. That's really all it is. Before I got my yoga strap, I was using towels and t-shirts. I was using my husband's belts. I was using a jump rope. There's so many options to replace your strap with. This is a pretty easy one to not have to buy. And like I said, for yoga bolsters, you don't necessarily need a yoga bolster. There's many out there that are super pretty. They're a little heftier, but you can use pillows, especially if you are a person who has a lot of pillows on their bed, like myself. We have six pillows on our bed. <laughs> I will just honestly pull off all six pillows and stack them until I get the height and the, the density that I want for whatever pose I'm in that requires a yoga block. And it works great. Sandbags, however, are a little harder to replicate. If you are into sewing, if you are into any sort of handicraft, crocheting, knitting, anything like that, these are pretty easy to make on their own. It's just a square of fabric filled with sand. Pretty easy, so even if you don't want to buy them, you could always make them yourself even if they don't have a good substitute. Like I said at the beginning, props are not required and props do not mean that you are a beginner or a new yogi. Props will help you no matter where you are in your yoga practice, if it's your first time on the mat or your thousandth time on the mat. There are lots of substitutes. They can help you strengthen yourself. They can help you gain more flexibility. And also they're just really fun to use. Sometimes there's nothing better than doing a restorative yoga pose with a bunch of props so you feel totally held Talk about the lack of luxury. <laughs> it doesn't get much better than that. All of that to say, I do have a series on how to use different yoga props, so I will link that below. I go into how to use blocks, how to use a strap, and how to use sandbags. And of course, I'm gonna add it to that. Thanks so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is a little different. It's not a class, it's more of a chatty video, but if you liked it, like it. If you are new here or aren't subscribed yet, be sure to subscribe. I have new yoga videos and yoga content every Thursday. And until next time, I'll see you later. Have a lovely rest of your day. Bye for now. Did I talk too long? I don't know. We'll see. I'm gonna cut so much out of this video. Still getting my groove here. That's fine. <laughs> I know words. What am I? Oh my god. What am I trying to say? What's the word? I'm gonna say goodbye. Oh wait, no, I gotta do the blog the, the blogger goodbye.